let's briefly try to interpret what this S squared operator is and what this expectation value is telling us. Because we see that for any spin one half state whatsoever, we get the same expectation value. Since this operator ends up being equal to 3h bar squared over 4 times the identity matrix. So for any spin one half particle, we get this expectation value. So now, here is one way to think about it. And if this starts to make your head hurt, you're probably thinking about it right. So we can think about this as a vector, right? That this is effectively just what is the spin vector. And if we want to think about the length of the vector, it would be the square root of this. And so this is in three-dimensional space, and we can say that then the spin vector has a length of square root of 3 h bar over 2, so square root of this. So that's the length of our vector. So what does it mean in 3 space if you have a fixed vector length? Well, that would trace out a sphere if you include all possible orientations. And I've attempted to draw it here, but I can't really draw a sphere very well. So I'm just trying to capture kind of part of the sphere here. So we would say that our spin vector lays on that sphere. So because of that, we can always get the exact same value here. We know exactly what the, um, what the length is. But now, one way to think about this is that when we then try to measure the orientation of spin, we in fact are getting the projection of the spin vector along a direction. So for instance, the projection of our spin vector onto the z-axis if we're measuring is it spin up or spin down in z. Because we know that the two possible values are, are positive h bar over 2 or negative h bar over 2. So we're actually saying here that the spin vector isn't aligned exactly with the z-axis or else we would be getting square root of 3 h bar over 2. So one interpretation of this is kind of going towards the uncertainty principle, that because we know how long this vector is exactly, we can't actually know how exactly which direction it's pointing in. We do get a component in the z-axis, but once we do that, and again, three dimensions here, you can imagine rotating the spin vector around, basically tracing out a cone. And that means we don't know the orientation in x or y. It's a cone that points in any direction in the xy plane, but always has the same component in z. And so that's one way to think about this, that we know that the z and the y measurements do not commute. We cannot know both the, the spin in z and the spin in y at the same time. And so we also can't know the spin in z and the spin in x in the same time. So if we have measured that it is spin up in z, again, there has to be uncertainty in x and y. That's what that cone represents. Again, if we imagine rotating it out this way, we don't know x and y. And again, if we measured that our spin light exactly on the z-axis, we would know x and y. Those would be zero then. So again, this is kind of an uncertainty principle that has to do with the relationship between each of the three directions. So we do know what the z component is and what this is. Those do commute, but we can't imagine our orientation being exactly determined or else we would then know what x, y, and z all are and those don't commute. So this is a little bit difficult to understand because there really isn't a classical situation that operates this way. This is a very fundamentally quantum mechanical situation, and that's part of why we start with spin. So um, again, we can try to interpret spin as a vector here, but if it starts to make not a lot of sense, it's because classically we can know exactly which way our vectors point. But at least in this situation in quantum mechanics, we can't.